Hello everyone and welcome to another random bits and pieces segment from my brain and today it's a while for we are playing some more franchise Aki Manager 7 with my historical challenge using the Tampa Bay Lightning. Alright so what a weird season it's been so far. We started pretty weak and then we had a very odd month of December I would say. Uh, our, the right side of our Diaz been uh, facing the plague um, but we managed to kind of climb up in the standings a little bit and we're holding on to the eighth position right now and that's despite all of the injuries so uh, I have a hard time evaluating what's going on for my team here uh, is it that Adrian O'Quinn and Ed Jovanovski are better than the defenseman that I usually play or you know did we get lucky um, I find it very hard to um, to kind of put together here. Uh, I really want to make a trade to help the team, especially on D, but there's no good Ds available. The best D man available right now is Curtis Lissishin, and I don't really need Curtis Lissishin to be honest. I already have Mark Bergevin, and you know all of those defensive guys already. I don't really need uh, another one. So I kind of have been staying put here. Uh, the trade deadline is uh, in March. Uh, so that kind of gives me one more month here to kind of see where we're going with that. Uh, again, I find it very hard to evaluate with all of the different injuries that I have on D here. So I'm not too sure. Uh, I don't want to make a move and then regret it. Uh, there is Scott Young that's kind of interesting uh, on the trading block is 28 would fit probably pretty good on my third line or so uh, but I don't really need a right winger to be honest so at that point I feel like I would be doing making a trade just for the sake of making a trade uh, it's really on D that I need help so I'm going to you know bite the bullet and kind of just continue uh, with what we're doing here and hopefully uh, I'll be graced with some more luck um, all right so we did win the last game in Ottawa it was a few days ago so I want to make sure on who was in net for that one pretty sure it was a be bullying yeah okay Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and continue to go with Abby Boleyn in net uh, as our, you know, starter. And, yeah, also of note, we ha we still have Rob DiMaio that's suspended. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on in Tampa Bay right now. So we have a losing record but by one game, so we're really close to a 500 record. And our next game is tomorrow in Calgary. We're playing in Western Canada here to start January. So let's get this going. I've been talking way too much already all right I do have some players on the trading block so who knows maybe something is gonna fall on my lap that would be you know ideal but uh, I don't know so Mario Lemieux extends his assist streak to eight games with two goals and two assists against Washington pretty good game for Mario board confidence update uh, Takeshi Okubo is concerned. Right, Boris Mironov has started to skate, so that's about two weeks for him to come back. All right, and we're going to be playing in Calgary against the Flames. They are 18, 16, and 5. So, a little bit better than us. Alright, so... Yep, let's go ahead and... Uh, Go ahead and do this. Go Lightning, go! So, Abby Bullen in net for us, Mike Vernon in net for the Flames. Alright, well, that's a good start. Uh, we won 5-2 to start the month here. So, good road game here. We outshot Calgary 33-31. to uh, Bill Guerin was the first star of the game, two goals and two assists, pretty good game. Uh, Jason Addison was the second star with two goals and an assist, and Mikael Anderson was the third star with two assists. So the Flames opened up the scoring in the first period, and then Bill Guerin scored on the power play from Jason Addison and Mikael Anderson. It was tied at one here after one. 
Then in the second period, Bill Guerin scored his 15th on the power play from Ch Sean Chambers. It was 2-1 Tampa Bay, uh, but then the Flames tied game, so it was tied at 2 here after 2. Then in the third period, Jason Ellison scored on the power play from Bill Guerin and Mikael Anderson, and then Jason Ellison on the power play again from Bill Guerin and Brent Gretzky. It was 4-2, and then Adrian O'Quinn scored in an empty net from Bobby Alec, and that was a 5-2 victory, so we really made them pay for their uh, lack of discipline there. We had four power play goals, so yeah, you don't mess with the Tampa Bay power play, apparently. All right, so 5-2 victory to start. We have a message there, and I'm afraid that's going to be Brant Myers that's suspended because he got an illegal check to the head there. Yeah, so we have two suspensions going on right now. Oh, my. Uh, oh, my God. Ricard Person, I could almost claim him. I'm so desperate. All right, so Brant Myers is suspended. He's going to miss one game. Okay, that's not the end of the world. Do I want to claim Ricard person? I mean, honestly. Oh my. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> after, after looking at that, I, I'm not too impressed. All right, I need to. All right, so I guess Bob Basson's gonna play. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and. Scratch Brant Myers. We're gonna go ahead and dress Bob Basson for one game. All right. Yeah, that should be good. All right. So now we're playing in Edmonton against the Oilers. They are 13, 22, and four. So not a really good season there in Edmonton. We are one and zero against the Oilers. We shut them out three nothing at home. So oh, that's two games in two days. So I'm gonna go ahead and play Akit for this one. Akit has not been as good this year for us as he's been last year. All right. So Jeff Hackett in net for us, uh, Bill Ranford in net for the Oilers. Oh, I see he hasn't been that good for us. 915 save percentage is not too shabby in the 90s. Oh, and we won 5-4. Oh, God. Yeah, we, uh, we got dominated in that game. But uh, thanks to Jeff Hackett, see, I... I doubted him and that kind of whipped him into form here. Yeah, we were completely outshot. 54 to 15. Uh, German Titov was the first out of the game. He had a goal and two assists. Uh, Mikael Svensson, I think that's his name. Did I get that wrong? Or Mikael Svensson? What's your name, buddy? Magnus Svensson was the second star with two assists, and Jason Addison was the third star with a goal and an assist. All right, so Jason Addison opened up the scoring in the first period from German Titov and Mark Bergevin. It was 1-0 Tampa Bay at that point. Then in the second period, Edmonton tied game. And then Mikael Anderson scored from Alexander McGillney and Mark Bergevin. And then German Titov scored on a power play from Adrian O'Quinn and Alexander McGillney. It was 3-1 Tampa Bay here after two. There was a fight between Kelly Bugberger and Bob Basson. Then in the third period, Edmonton tied game at three with two goals. Then Brian Bradley scored on the power play from Alexander McGillney and German Titov. So three assists for McGillney. That's pretty good. Then Bill Guerin scored from Jason Ellison, made it 5-3. Then about three minutes later, the Oilers scored, made it 5-4. But we held on to the barrage of shots. That's crazy that we got dominated like that. All right, so Brant Myers is back from suspension, so I'm going to put him back in the lineup. Steve Eiserman's point streak ended at 16 games. It was held scoreless against the Stars. Kelly Owenson is hurt with the Washington Capitals. He's going to miss... Well, 
Well, we don't know. Torn hit Palabrum, that's probably gonna be a quite a quite a while. Three to four months, there you go. Zardy Zalebski has a good game with Hartford. He had a hat trick three goals in that same game against Washington. Mario Lemieux extends his assist streak to nine games with a goal and three assists against the Suns. And no one could stop Trevor Linden. He had three goals and an assist against the Panthers. Speaking of Trevor Linden and the Canucks, that's going to be our next game here in a couple days. So maybe we can get a couple players to start feeling better. That'd be great. Stu Grimson is available on waivers. Yeah, I already have a face puncher. Thank you. Oh, speaking of which, I'm going to need to put him back in, huh? All right, so Yevgeny Nemesnikov is back from suspension in Edmonton. Back in the lineup. A strong night for Murray Craven in Hartford. He had a hat-trick, three goals, and an assist against Ottawa. Mario Lemieux's assist three ended at nine games. He was held scoreless against the Wings. Mark Messi is suspended. He's going to miss five games. And Jason Marshall might be able to play, maybe. Uh, oh, so he's, uh, he's declined, believe it or not. He already wasn't all that high. Apparently he's declined. Okay. Okay. All right, so we're going to come here. No. First, I have to scratch you. Thank you for the fight that you had. Gotta thank your players for what they do for you. I mean, a fight doesn't really do anything for me, but who knows? Maybe somebody felt good about it on the team. have to change anything there. I don't have to change anything until those guys come back or Rob DeMaio. Alright, so we are in Vancouver to play against the Canucks. Um, Canucks are 20-13-5, and 5, so pretty decent season going on for them so far. Uh, we are 0-1 against Vancouver. I know it says 0-0-1, but that's a limitation of the game here uh, we did lose in overtime 5-4 against them however in 1996 there are no uh, overtime losses that give you a point so that's why it's uh, it's erroneous that it's shown like that right so gonna play here so i've put abby Boonin back in net brant myers is back in the lineup as well to face punch somebody all right, so Abby Boulin is going to be in net for us. John Van Beesbrook is going to be in net for the Canucks. So Canucks are pretty good. It might be a tough game. Still, go Lightning, go. Yeah, we lost 4 nothing. So that happened. Uh, yeah, we were badly outshot again, 45-28. to 28. John Van Beesbrook was the first star of the game. He made 28 saves and got a shutout. Peter Nedved was the second star with a goal and an assist. And Yerki Lume was the third star with two assists. So not much to talk about. Um, didn't really get anything going for the team. It happened, sadly. All right, so Andrew Castles extends his point straight to 12 games with an assist against the Bruins. Uh, Marty McSorley is suspended with the Kings. He's going to miss four games. Pavel Bury in that same game for the Kings had a good game. He had a hat-trick. That was against the Sharks. Oh, God, Butch Goring is um, looking at losing his job as the coach for Buffalo, which... Didn't they just fire John McClure or something? <laughs> All right. Pierre Turgeon with the Islanders is hurt. He's going to miss two weeks. Okay, so not too bad, I suppose. All right, so Sean Burr is available. 
Uh, Mike Stapleton in Anaheim is suspended. He's going to miss a game. And Jason Marshall is ready to come back. And we're about to play the Habs. All right, so I think I'm going to go ahead and um, scratch Jovanovski. Try to spare him a little bit. He's still very, very young. He's only 19. Now, I don't have as much a problem to play O'Coin because he's, he's 22. Uh, but yeah, Jovanovski is only 19, so maybe a little bit over his head here. Yeah, those are you know his offensive game rating is really not that great. So let's uh, put Marshall in. I don't have high expectations on Jason Marshall, but I will still check to see what's his best role, especially since it looks like he has uh, become less good. I say at home defenseman is fine. So I want O'Quint here. Actually, I want to point here. Ooh, and that uh, right side there is uh, a little difficult to look at. So, we are in Montreal to play the Habs. They are 19, 17, and 4. That's good for 5th in the East. And we are 1-1 one one against them this season. We are going to go back with Abibulin in net for this game. All right, so let's take a look at the... Yeah. All right, so I'm going to give a, a road game here to... Um, Akit, maybe against the abs on the 22nd. We'll see. There's no two in the, two games in two nights uh, for the rest of the month, so I do need to play a Bibul and uh, Akit from time to time as well. Okay. A Bibulin in net for us. Patrick Roy in net for the Canadians. Oh, yeah. 7-3 victory over the abs. So those of you who have followed me for a while, you know that it always makes me feel good. All right, so we outshot Montreal 38 to 34. We're still allowing quite a bit of shots, but then again, keep in mind our our right side of the of the D is uh, in pretty bad shape. I mean, my only regular that's still in the lineup is playing on one leg. He's playing injured, so and the other two are replacement level. So it is what it is. All right, so. Uh, Given the circumstances, you know, we're winning quite a few games, so I'm okay with that. So Brian Bradley was the first of the game. He had three assists. Alex Livanov finally woke up here, got two goals. And the second star in Yanni, Yanni Lokanen was the third star with an assist. Uh, Montreal scored first in the first period, then we scored twice. Mikael Anderson scored from Sean Chambers and Yanni Lokanen, and then Brent Gretzky scored on the power play from Brian Bradley. And it was a 2-1 lead for Tampa Bay at that point. Lots and lots of penalties in the first period. Then we went into the second and uh, Alex Sullivan have scored from Brian Bradley and Mark Bergevin. It was 3-1 Tampa Bay at that point. Montreal scored, made it 3-2, but then we scored two more goals. Alex Selivanov again from Bobby Elick and then Brant Myers from Jason Marshall and Vili Pelton. Oh my, lots of people not getting a lot of points <laughs> on that particular goal. And it was a 5-2 lead here after two. Then in the third period, uh, German Titov scored on the power play from Alexander McGinley and Brian Bradley. And then Bill Guerin from German Titov and Jason Allison made it 7-2. Montreal scored a late goal, made it 7-3, but it was too late. Oh, yeah. A nice 7-3 victory here. Brian Bellows has played in his thousand game against us. He did get a goal. Uh, so Brian Bellows is 31 and he is still a 3 star player there was no stopping Pavel Bure with the Kings 3 goals and an assist against the Stars 
Paul Laos is back from suspension with Pittsburgh, back in the lineup over there. Big game for Dave Christian with the Florida Panthers. He had three goals and an assist against the Sharks. And the, in that same game, the red light stayed on for Tim Sweeney, who had three goals and an assist. Right, and we have a few days off here before we play against the Ottawa Senators. Bob Essenza is available. Oh, yeah, he's uh, he's regressed quite a bit. Oh, when Nolan extends his goal streak to five games, he got a goal against the Bruins. Andrew Castles extends his point streak to 13 games with three assists against the Oilers. Pretty good game. Brettel produced 500 goals in his career. He scored a one-goal game against the Devils. And Mike Stapleton is back from suspension in Anaheim. Andrew Castle's point streak ended at 13 games. He was held scoreless against the Flames. And no further punishment for Guy Carboneau in Montreal, not suspended. Alright, so Jason Wilmer is not suspended with the Islanders. Right, and in uh, other suspension news, uh, Alexey Morozov got suspended in Dallas. He's going to miss six games. All right, so we are playing here against the Suns. So Ottawa's going to be in town. Um, they are nine twenty-nine and three. That's good for last in the East, and we are two and zero against Ottawa this season. Yeah, I think I'm going to play Aket against the Islanders and then against St. Louis. And then come back at home for the the 2D game against Pittsburgh. Oh, that's going to be a fun one. All right, let's play Ottawa. All right, so Ottawa's going to go with Darren Pupa. Uh, we're going to go with Nikolai Abibulin. He's been pretty steady this season. Well... I should say he's been starting to play a lot better the last couple months. That would be a little bit more accurate. And it's a 5-5 tie. That doesn't make me very happy. Uh, we should have been able to beat Ottawa. And the, we were outplayed. So I'm not happy with that one. Ottawa outshot us 46-38. Brian Bradley uh, was the first out of the game with two goals. Alexey Yashin was the second star of the game with a hat-trick, three goals, and then German Titov was the third star with a goal and an assist. Uh, back home, uh, we got 16,858 people in attendance for that game. So Ottawa scored first in the first period, then Sean Chambers scored his fifth from Vili Peltonen and German Titov, tied the game at one, and that's how it was here after one. Then German Titov scored in the second period from Bobby Alic and Bill Guerin, made it 2-1. And then Ottawa scored three unanswered goals and were up 4-2. And then Bill Guerin scored from Jason Addison uh, to bring us back to within one at the end of the period. So it was 4-3 Ottawa here after two. Then they made it 5-3 early in the third period, but uh, Brian Bradley scored twice. So he scored his 20th from Mikael Anderson, and then he scored again from Alexander McGillney and Yanni Lokanen. It was tied at 5, and of course nobody scored in overtime. So, yeah, a 5-5 tie. That's, actu that's actually our first tie of the season. Oh my, Mike Krushelinski is yet again on waivers. So, FJ... You know, maybe a lot can be said about that. All right, and then Jeff Batters. So the Blues are passing two guys through waivers. I'm not going to go for either. Uh, prolific passing night for Pat Verbeek. Uh, oh, that was against us. He had four assists. He wasn't even a star. Right, and we saw that uh, Yashin had a trick. Rob DiMaio is back from suspension. Good. Uh, Bob Bugner in Detroit is suspended. He's going to miss six games. And Robert Zvela is about to come back. We definitely could use him. 
All right, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and scratch Pelton in, I suppose. Although at this point, Pelton is playing a lot better than Sullivan. I'm gonna scratch Sullivan off. I know he had a two goal game, but he's not doing much. You know you're struggling, buddy, when I scratch you over the face puncher. That should, yeah, that should be a wake up call. Definitely should be. Let's take a look at uh, Yeah, you're fine with that roll. And I'm putting you right back on the third line with Bobby Alec and Brent Gretzky. And you're gonna go kill penalties as well. There you go. I think we're all good here. Oh, that's uh, the next game is against the Islanders. So let's give the start to Ackett. Then we'll give him another one against St. Louis here. That sounds about right. I feel that's how a real coach would do it. Thomas Sandstrom has produced 300 goals in his career with a goal against Chicago. Thomas Sandstrom is 31 and still a four-star player. Maybe I should go and try and get him. Marty McSorty is back from suspension. Mm -hmm. Scott Stevens has earned 500 assists in his career. With two assists against Dallas, 31-year-old Scott Stevens, so a three-star defenseman. And Robert Zvella is on the verge of coming back. Yes, please. Alright. So playing the Islanders, they are 23-17-1. That's good for second in the East. Oh. We are 1-1 one one against the Islanders. We had a nice 5-2 win at home, but then we lost 7-4 in Uniondale. All right, so Jeff Hackett in net for us. Glenn Ely is going to be in net for the Islanders. And we lost that one 3-1, and Jeff Hackett lost his fire again. All right, so I guess there's a reason why they are near the top of the standings and they outshot us 41 to 26 uh, Martin Ludeman or Mirko Ludeman was the first star of the game he had an assist Mikael Anderson was the second star with an assist and Zygmunt Palfi was the third star with an assist as well right Islanders scored first in the first period it was one nothing and then in the second period Brian Bradley scored from Alexander McGillney and Mikael Anderson it was tied at one and in the third period, they scored twice and ran away with a 3-1 to victory. Not a whole lot to say, not a lot of penalties, not much going on here, other than we just lost. All right, R Robert Pukalovic is available. Ted Donato has a good game in Boston. He had four assists against the Canucks. Okay, Boris Muranov is also about to come back. That's good, that's good. And then Zvelo is on the brink of returning. Who knows, with a little bit of luck, he might be coming back right now to face the Sharks. Oh, yes, he is. Awesome. All right, so Adam Oates extends his SS3 to eight games with two assists against the Devils. Injury to sideline Oilers, Bernie Nichols. All right. A torn elbow ligament for out for five months, so the season's pretty much over for Bernie Nichols. Wow, very similar records, huh? Timo Selene has a memorable game. Uh, he had three goals and an assist against the Washington Capitals. Keith Ketchup 
set everything up tonight. He had four assists in that same game against the Washington Capitals. Keep okay, Mironov back soon. Zvela back now. Awesome. So I can screw. Oops. So I can send you back down. I can get you back up. can scratch you I can dress you right. yeah quarterback is fine oh oh I already have a quarterback in Adrian O'Quine that's fine So Zvela. Then O'Coin's gonna replace Karpovtsev here, here, and here. Trying to uh, trying to help out our poor injured Karpovtsev by giving him a, him a little bit less. Um, Ice time. Poor guy's playing injured out of necessity. But Mironov is about to be back, so yeah. All right. So, oh, did I put uh, Abby Budin back in? I sure did. All right. So the Sharks are in town, and uh, then we hit the road again. Uh, the Sharks, I believe, are the worst team in the entire league. They are five thirty-four and six. We have not played the Sharks so far. I'm gonna be pretty upset if we don't beat them. All right. Uh, Sandy Sozalinch is hurt, so he's not gonna be playing this game. All right, and we have Arthur's Irbe and Abramov in net, and then we have Sean Anderson, Astley, Brad Warrenka, Jason Moore, Craig Muni, Roloff, and Zettler on D. Then Garpinlov, Gusmanov, uh, Nick Kiprios, Tim Sweeney, Ray Whitney, Bordolo, McDonough, Sullivan, Burquist, Felun, Ferraro, Godro, and Nedved. Not Peter Nedved, it's Zdenek Nedved. Oh my, yeah, there's a few holes in there, and that's true. They have ki they, they lost Kelly Kiss you to retirement. All right, so well, let's see if we can beat the Sharks. They're struggling a little bit. All right, so Sergei Abramov is going to be in net for the Sharks. We are going to go with Nikolai Abibulin. Alright, so it's not the massacre I was expecting, but we won 2 nothing. so it is a shutout. I was expecting or hoping for a few more goals, but it's hard to be disappointed when, you know, you get a shutout. Uh, we outshot them 47-21. to 21. Uh, Abramov, despite the loss, was the first out of the game. He made 45 saves, then Sean Anderson was the second star with no points, and Brent Gretzky was the third star. He actually scored both of our goals. 15,189 people in attendance for this game here. And all the scoring happened in the third period. Brent Gretzky scored from Adrian Okoy and then Gretzky again from Rob DiMaio and Bobby Alec. And that was it. 2 nothing victory here over the Sharks. All right, bad news for Colorado. Joe Sakic is hurt for seven months. Wow. Well, see you next season, Joe Sakic. Oh, he was having a great season. 257 points in 33 games. Wow. With a torn PCL. And then Frederick Lawson in uh, Winnipeg has a torn ACL, and he's going to be out for six months. So that's it for Frederick Lawson this season. Wow. 
Looks like I'm not the only team having injuries, though. Those are good players. All right, so we are we have four more or three more. We have four more days before we start a three-game road trip. Wow. It all wanted to come out of my mouth at the same time. All right, so Boris Muranov is back, so that's great. Uh, O'Quain doesn't have to clear waivers, so we're gonna send him down. Then we're gonna go ahead and get Boris Muranov back on the team. Uh, I think we did okay with all the injuries and everything. Uh, I think we managed to have a winning record and everything, so definitely not too disappointed with that. Right, go ahead and get dressed. Tactics player Miranov. Yeah, two way defenseman is plenty fine for me. All right, so um, there we go. Hey, there you have it. All right. And yeah, it's going to be in Montreal that we play. We're tight in the pretty tight in the standings with them, so it's going to be a pretty important game. Um, so let's start advancing here. A few days off. Oh, there's no games being played. That's probably because that was the All Star break in real life. Back, back in the day. All right, so we are facing the Habs. Um, they are 20, 21, and 4. That's good for 8 in the East. They're 1 point behind us, and we are 2 and 1 against Montreal. So that's a pretty big game here. If they beat us, they leapfrog us. If we beat them, uh, we, we leapfrog the Devils and get some distance here. Okay, I still have Abby Boulin in net, yes. So Abby Boulin is gonna, uh, not Abby Boulin, Hackett's gonna play in St. Louis, like I said. So come on, Abby Boulin in net, Patrick, why in net? Go Lightning, go. Oh yeah, and it's another victory, 2-1. to one. Not as impressive as the last one, 7-3, but it is a win nonetheless, 2-1. to one. Uh, we outshot Montreal 28 to 26, so pretty tight game. Uh, McGillney was the first star of the game. He scored both of our goals. That's why I went and got McGillney because I needed somebody to score goals on this team. Uh, John Leclerc was the second star of the game with an assist, and Mikael Anderson was the third star with an assist. So nobody scored it in the first. Then in the second period, Alexander McGillney scored from Robert Zvela and Brian Bradley. Then. Uh, in the third period, Alexander McGillney scored again from Mikael Anderson. And then Montreal scored with 7.26 left to go in the third period, but they just couldn't tie the game. So we won 2-1. to one. Pretty nice little win there. Okay, that guy is on waivers again. Adam Oates is a streak, ended at 8 games, so he was held scoreless against Pittsburgh. Now we have a couple more days before we play in Boston against the Bruins. Oh, Butch Goring loses his job. All right, so Butch Goring was canned by the Buffalo Sabres. They are 17, 26, and 2. 
So he is gone and he is replaced by John Tortorella. Oh my. Yeah, the... Uh, they better get started to uh, play hard in Buffalo. All right, Mark Macy is back from suspension with the Rangers. All right, and we are about to play in Boston against the Bruins. The Bruins are pretty good. They are 28, 12, and 3. That's good for third in the East. But we are 2 and 1 against the Boston Bruins this season. Of course, I would like another win so that we can get a little bit more separation with the teams behind us. But Boston is going to be a pretty good challenge here. We're going with Abby Boulin. Andy Moog is going to be a net for Boston. Yeah, we lost 4 nothing, so that didn't exactly go uh, the way we wanted. We were outshot 36 to 30. Uh, Andy Moog was the first star of the game. He made 30 saves and got the shutout. Adam Oates was the second star with two assists. And Steve Hines was the third star with a goal. Yeah, and there was no fight or nothing, so... All right. Ian Fraser is available. I'm not going to pick him up. And now we're going to be playing in St. Louis. Oh! All right, so I got a practice injury. Brent Gretzky is hurt, and he's going to miss four weeks because he, you know got hurt practicing with a bruised kneecap all right so I guess that brings Sedivanov back in the lineup and I'm gonna recall somebody all right who am I recalling Thing I'm gonna recall Aaron Gavey. He's having quite a season, almost a point per game. I'm not expecting for him to play all that much, if at all, but hey, I have a taste of being uh, in the NHL and having a NHL salary, buddy. Alright, now I need to fix my lines. Um, I think I'm gonna put Pelton in here, and then. Sullivanov can play on the fourth line. He's not doing anything anyway, so. Hmm. Guess we're gonna use uh, Bobby Olick on the point. Not sure how that's gonna go. But yeah. Alright, oh, I have to put Hackett in net. That's right, you thought I was gonna forget, huh? Well, I don't blame you. Alright, so St. Louis. They are 20, 22, and 4. So, almost the same amount of points as us. We have not played them this season. No injuries in St. Louis. So, this is the best team they can put together. So, Cujo in net, uh, Curtis Joseph, and then Andrea Carpano. Is that a girl? Anyway, so yeah, uh, Joseph and Carpano, and then on D, we have Ait, Utsila, Rick Zombo, 
uh, Chris Hutkin, Jeff Brown, Stefan Quintet. Yeah, that D is, uh, yeah. Then uh, Brent Hughes, Dave Laurie, uh, Brendan Shannon, Wilson, Kapusta, Jenny Korolev, Murray, Nemchinov, Taylor Emerson, Brett Hull, Laperriere, Komutov, and Plavucha. Plavuka. This is a weird team. It's a very uneven team. I'm not sure how I feel about it. All right, so we have Jeff Hackett in net. They have Curtis Joseph. We lost again 5-1, so we've lost a couple games here. That's not good. Uh, we were outshot 44-27. to Utsila was the first star of the game. He had two goals. Jeff Brown was the second star with two assists. And Ian Laperriere was the third star with a goal. So St. Louis scored twice into the first period, took a 2 0 lead, and then Bobby Alex scored his fifth from Rob DiMaio and Vili Peltanen. 2 1 St. Louis here after one. Then they scored three goals in the second period, that made it 5 1. Then we had a fight between Brendan Shannon and Brant Myers. So good job by Brant Myers to take Brendan Shannon out for five minutes. Sadly, we didn't really take advantage of that in any way, shape, or form. We lost that game 5 to 1. And we slid right the way back to the eighth spot, and it's so tight, we can't afford to be losing games. Ray Shepard extends his goal streak to five games with two goals and an assist against the Chicago Blackhawks. Martin Strecker extends his goal streak to five. He had a goal against Philadelphia. Luke Robitaille has a strong game. He had a hat trick, three goals against the Islanders. All right. You know what? I think I like Pelton and better on the point than Bobby Alec. Just a gut feeling. Alright, so we have three more days before Pittsburgh is in town. Um, that's going to be our 2D game. Yeah, I'm a little bit afraid, but it is what it is. Alexander Semak is on waivers. I believe that's not the first time, and I am not picking him up. All right, Ray Shepard extends his goal streak to six games with two goals against the Leafs. Prolific passing night for Pierre Turgeon. He had four assists against Buffalo. All right, and... All right, so this is January 31st. Uh, we are about to play at home against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is 38, 8, and 3. They are first by, by a mile in the Eastern Conference. That is probably not going to be the most entertaining 2D game, unless you're a Pens fan. Um, so, yeah, double-checking. I do have Abby Bulletin, Abby Bulletin in net for that game. All right. All right, so they're going to have Tom Barrasso in net. We have Nikolai Abibulin. Let's do this. A W would be great here, but uh, that's going to be a pretty tough task. I have a feeling we're going to take a bunch of penalties. Oh! Awesome. So we're in black. I didn't even mm -hmm. have the time have the time to finish taking some water in. So Alexander McGillney scored from Mikael Anderson and Mark Bergevin, and we are up one nothing here in the first period with nineteen twenty eight left to go. Alright, somebody injure Mario Lemieux. Oh, we're going on the power play. Ulf Samuelson just took a penalty. Alright. We 
we still have uh, about 30 seconds left of power play. All right, power play is over. Let's dance in the corner. All right, I'll take it. Uh, Jason Addison from German Sitov probably should have been offside, but I will take it. We are up 2 0 here against Pittsburgh in Tampa Bay with 16 23 left to go in the first period. A 2 0 lead for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Who would have believed that? Oh, Wolf Samuelson took another penalty. All right, maybe we can score on that power play. 13-21 left to go in the first period. We are still up 2-0. Ron Francis at the playoff dot for the Penguins. Puck is out of play. Come on. All right, that power play is over. So again, we couldn't score on a power play. Come on, little square. You can do it. Oh, Yanni Lacanon took a penalty. So it's our turn to kill a penalty. Yeah, that's uh, that's not good. Pittsburgh ought to have a really strong power play with Mario Lemieux, Yaramir Jagger, Ron Francis, Larry Murphy. Oh my god. And Streko just scored. All right, so Streko from Larry Murphy and Mario Lemieux. We are up 2-1 to one here with 8.56 left to go in the first period. Oh, Mick Vukota got into a fight with Really? Alexander McGillney got into a fight? Wow, okay. Um, that sucks. One of our best players has been taken out of the lineup for five minutes against a face puncher. Mick Vukota was nothing more than a face puncher. Dancing in the corner. There you go. Come on, guys. Not allow a go. Oh, God. We took a penalty, though. Brian Bradley took a penalty for tripping. With 2.46 left to go in the first period, Pittsburgh's going back on the power play. That's not good. We don't want to give them too many of those. All right, so they scored again, tied at two. Mario Lemieux from Jagger and Murphy. So we are tied at two here with 132 left to go in the first period. Okay. Um, I 
All right, so we are tied at two here after one. Uh, we had 11 shots on goal. They had 11 shots on goal. Um, but for some reason, that gives Abby Boulin a game rating of 54, but Barroso, it gives him a game rating of 50. So, um, yeah. Tied at two. Uh, Pittsburgh is really strong. I'm afraid they're going to start opening the machine. All right, Paul Laos took a penalty, so we're going on the power play. We need to score on that one. We haven't scored on uh, any of our power plays so far, I don't think. Oh, did we? Maybe our second goal was on the power play. Oh, goal! Now that one is on the power play, I think. Uh, yeah, it is. German Tito from Robert Zvela and Alexander Maggioni. All right, we are back up by one, three to two here in the second period with 18.40 left to go. Another fight between Paul Laos and Brant Myers. I, I like that a little bit better. That that's what Brant, Brant Myers is for. Played it into the. Uh, the Forbidden Zone. It wasn't a Forbidden Zone in 1996. Oh, Boris Mironov just took a penalty. Yeah, are they gonna score on the power play again or are we gonna be able to stop this one? Oof. That was Mario Lemieux right in the slot. <laughs> yeah, we don't want for that to happen too often. All right, so we killed that penalty, so that's the good news. We're only up by one. But we're still up, so that's still good, right? Right? Oh, and Tom Barrasso stops the puck. Not a lot to report here. Like we're dancing around a lot, not necessarily getting a lot of shots. All right, that's a save. And that's a save for the Barrasso. Come on. That's Jagger, don't let it don't give him any space. There you go. Yanila Cannon took a penalty with 4.15 left to go in the second period. We need to kill another one. Okay, that was weird. Why was it showing as if we were on the other side for a second? That was very weird. So we killed that penalty. 
again. I'm proud of my boys. Oh, are they really my boys? I, I'm proud of my little squares. Maybe a little bit more accurate. All right, second period is over. We are up three to two. Uh, we have 24 shots total. They have 19, so we've been able to kind of uh, limit Pittsburgh in uh, terms of shots on goal, uh, which is pretty impressive, to be honest. Um, hopefully it can continue here in the third period. Alright, puck is out of play. Let's go lightning. Oh. Let's go bolts. Come on. Oh. We've, uh, Len Barry took a penalty. We were, like, putting pressure in the office, offensive zone here. All right. We have to kill another one. Yeah, stay behind the net like that, where it's safe. Oh, dear God. <laughs> All right, Larry Murphy scored from Mario Lemieux on that power play. We're tied at three here with 12.31 left to go in the third period. Come on. Go get me another one. Come on, McGillney. Ah. Oh, yeah, that's Vidi Pelton from Bobby Alec and Mark Bergevin. We are back up 4-3 here in the third period with 10.38 left to go. Come on, guys. We can do it. I believe in you. Oh, shot the, the rebound wide, thankfully. Puck is out of play. 8-11 left to go in the third period. Tampa Bay still up 4-3 here in Tampa Bay against the Eastern Conference uh, team-leading Pittsburgh Penguins. Oh, 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 that looked good, but we couldn't score. It was a two-on-one, I believe. Oh, offside, 4.45 left to go in the third period. Tampa Bay still up by one against Pittsburgh. Now it's not the time for you to go and grab a drink. The action, there's action. The game is tight. 3.21 left to go in the third period. All right, it's a stop here by Abby Bullen. Oh. Ulf Samuelson scored from Yuri Dopito and Larry Murphy. We're tied at four with 2.27 left to go in the third. Yikes. I was hoping we could hold on to the lead, but we couldn't. And another icing for the... Pittsburgh Penguins, 143 left to go in the third. A 
Larry Murphy took a penalty. Oh, let's make them pay for that late penalty that they took. All right, 105. We didn't score, so we are going in overtime. Uh, we had 33 shots, they had 26. All right, we are still on the power play. Oh, Allison's. Oh, it's a goal. Allison just scored in overtime against Pittsburgh, and we won against the best team in the East. I did not see that coming. So it's a 5-4 overtime win. So we outshot Pittsburgh 34-26. to Alexander McGillney was the first star of the game. He had a goal and an assist. Larry Murphy was the second star with a goal and three assists. And Mikael Anderson was the third star with two assists. 17,211 people in attendance for the game. So McGillney scored first for Mikael Anderson and Mark Bergeron, and then Jason Allison from German Titov and Bill Guerin. It was 2-0, but then Pittsburgh tied the game before the end of the first period, and it was tied at 2 after 1. We had a fight that I didn't like much. Alexander McGillney fought Mick Vukota. Then in the second period, German Titov scored on a power play from Robert Zvela and Alexander McGillney. It was 3-2 Tampa Bay at that point. Then there was a fight between Brant Myers and Paul Laus. I agreed a little bit more to that one. Then in the third period, Pittsburgh scored to tie the game. Then we Vili Pelton and scored from Bobby Alec and Mark Bergeron gave us a 4-3 lead. Then late in the period, Pittsburgh scored, tied a game. We went in overtime and Jason Allison scored on the power play from Mikael Anderson and Bill Guerin. That one's in the books, folks. We won 5-4. All right. Uh, Pat Lafontaine has racked up 500 assists in his career with a uh, goal and two assists against Florida. Pat Lafontaine, 30, 30 years old, five star players. So Cam Neely has reached 400 goals in his career with a goal and an assist against Ottawa. Cam Neely is 30 and a three star player. And uh, Jeremy Roenick and Ed Belfour are the players of the month, both from Chicago, so I'm guessing they had a pretty good month. So we had a decent month as, month as well. Not, you know, crazy good, but decent. Uh, we are now 7th in the East, tied with the Washington Capitals, who are 8th, but we have a game on hand. So, yeah, it's pretty tight. That win against Pittsburgh was uh, pretty good. Um, let's take a look in the West. So in the West, Colorado is first, and then Chicago, Winnipeg, LA, Vancouver, Calgary. Now Detroit is starting to win, so now they're back into a they're back into a playoff spot, and then St. Louis. And San Jose is still the worst team in the league. All right, so let's take a quick look at our stats. Right, so we have Brian Bradley, that's still more than a point per game. He is 52 and 48. McGillney is 47 and 46. So those guys are doing the job. Then Anderson, 32 and 48. Garen, 31 and 48. Sitov, 31 and 42. Jason Addison, 25 and 39. And then our best defenseman offensively is Robert Zvela. He's, he's actually almost a point per game. He's 25 and 30. Uh, he just missed a lot of time due to an injury. All right, so we're not looking too bad here. Uh, right, and both of our goaltenders are stopping more uh, more goals than anticipated. So both of our goaltenders are doing okay. Of course, Ackett struggles more. Uh, he allows more goals and everything. But uh, his save percentage is 9.15, so he's actually stopping more pucks than a Bibelin for some reason. So he's just, uh, it looks like we're not playing as confidently when uh, Ackett is in net and we allow more shots. That's probably what's going on here. Um, now in the entire league, 
the best goal scorer is Mario Lemieux and Luke Robitaille. They both and <laughs> Jeremy Roenick. The, the three of them have 35 goals. Of course, we don't have anybody in there. Uh, the best passer is Mario Lemieux by far with 62 assists. So Lemieux has 97 points. That's 16 more than second place Doug Gilmore. All right. Let's take a look at the goaltenders. Yeah, so my goaltenders are about average in uh, save percentage. So I'm getting about average goaltending. That sounds about right. We're, you know, kind of in the middle <laughs> pack for our record and everything. So I guess that makes sense. All right, so this is where we're at. Now, of course, next month is February, so prior to the video, I'm going to get to decide who stays as far as uh, expiring contracts and who I'm going to let walk. And the ones that I am deciding to let walk, I might make try and make trades uh, to see if I can bolster. I still want to get my D a little bit better. I'm, that still worries me a lot. But anyway, uh, we'll see. Uh, the trade deadline is at the end of March, so I still have a little bit of time to try to figure something out. But anyway, so I'm stopping here. As usual, I do want to thank you for tuning in. And if you've liked the video, please feel free to like, subscribe, share, comment, all of that good stuff. And until I roll this game again, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.